हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट सम बेसिक कंटिन्यूस टाइम सिग्नल्स सम सिग्नल्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज फ्रीक्वेंटली सो वी आर जस्ट हैविंग एन इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑल द सिग्नल दैट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज एयर एंड देयर फ्रीक्वेंटली इन द सब्जेक्ट Uh, we are going to study about them, a few properties of them, and uh, later as we move on, we'll see what are the properties they're holding. So first function that we are going to look at is unit step, unit step function. So this function is what it names signifies. This is a step of a unit, a step of one. Which starts at t is equal to zero. So we are representing this unit step uh, function, unit step signal, by u t. So uh, the basic definition of the signal u t is that u t is one for positive time and zero for negative time intervals. Okay. So this is going to be, if I want to represent it, this is going to be zero for all the time intervals before t is equal to zero and one for One for all the positive time intervals. So uh, value of this function u t at t is equal to zero is not defined, or maybe in an absolute sense, sometimes you can say that average of this zero and one value of u t at t is equal to zero is point five. But more accurate would be to say that value of u t at t is equal to zero is not defined. Okay, so this is how we are defining a unit step function. This is zero for all the negative time intervals and one for all the positive time intervals. Now suppose I want to shift this function. I want that this function should have value one for all time intervals after t is equal to two and should be zero for all the time before t is equal to two. Then I can what I can do is I can just shift this entire function to right by two units. Two units. Then, then after t is equal to two, u t this function is having value one, and before t is equal to two, the function is having value zero. So this function is known as u of t minus two. This function is being right shifted by two units u t minus two. Okay, so this is how a general function. Suppose I want to generalize this. This instant be t naught. Then this is how u t minus t naught is going to look like. Okay, then we will say that for all the values of this is how I am going to define u t minus t naught. This is going to be zero for all the time before t naught and one for all the time instant after t is equal to t naught. Okay, so this is how we are defining unit step function. Next function that we are going to look at is. Unit impulse function. This is unit impulse. Unit impulse signal. So what happens in unit impulse signal is see this is how we are representing a unit impulse signal. So value of this unit impulse signal is infinity. For t is equal to zero, this is defined as when t is equal to zero and zero when t is not equal to zero. So for all the time instants other than t is equal to zero, this impulse signal is having zero value. That is, it does not exist. But when t is zero, that is only at the origin, only at t is equal to zero, this function exists and is having an Value infinity, value infinite. See, this is not uh, any general function. Why? Because uh, when we define area of this function, area under the signal, we say it to be. We consider it to be one. But as you can uh, see, that any signal which is existing at a single point cannot have area under it as one. Okay? It will. It is going to have area as zero. But since we are defining that the area under the signal is one, that is why we say that this is not any normal function. This is a special function. Okay? So we also know, know, uh, name it as a general function or uh, Dirac impulse function. 
so uh, this function is going to be defined as so we using this unit impulse function for the purpose of sampling okay whenever we are going uh, to convert a continuous time signal into a discrete time sequence we multiply the continuous time signal with the impulse train only we are using this signal for sampling why because this uh, function is existing at single instance of time single points of time so when you multiply some other function with this function we are going to obtain the value of that function at that instance of time so that is how we can use this function for sampling also one more thing that you can see here is uh, so these are some properties of delta function certain properties that you can see so first property is if we are integrating another function multiplied with this delta function over an interval of minus infinity to infinity you are going to yield the value of this function at zero interval fine so we are going to yield this value at time is equal to zero okay and if we are uh, if just generalization of this if the intervals of integration are from a to b a to b and what happens is is going to have the same result phi 0 if if 0 lies between a and b right if 0 lies in between this interval if the intervals are something like this then the result is going to be 0 c since these intervals are not holding the value 0 they are not uh, enclosing this 0 value that is why delta t is not going to exist at that point so uh, when you multiply delta t at any other point it's going to give 0 value of delta t at any other point except t is equal to 0 is 0 that is why this happened okay and and the value is going to be undefined if if a is 0 or b is 0 so if either of them is 0 then this uh, integral is going to give you value as 0 okay so this is one property uh, that we are using that we are this is also known as shifting property shifting property of impulse function next property that you can see is if you are taking this integral you are taking similar kind of integral but now what we are considering is we are considering a shifted so now we are considering a shifted impulse function see this impulse function is going to exist at a single point which is t is equal to t naught this is going to exist at only one point which is t is equal to t naught so when you are multiplying another function with this shifted impulse function what happens is we get the value of this function with this testing function at t naught at t naught why because this del t minus t naught existed only at a single point which was somewhere near t naught okay so when you are multiplying another function with this function you are going to get its value at a single point which is t naught uh, so there are several other properties of this uh, delta function that we can see So when we are scaling this function, when we are trying to time scale this function, time scaling means if I just multiply this uh, constant a with the time, time inside this argument, then what happens is why because see this delta t is uh, occurring only for t is equal to 0 okay it is not occurring for any other values of time so when you are doing this time shifting uh, time scaling i'm sorry when you are performing this time scaling what happens is this value comes out and affects the area because you know that area of this function is going to be one only okay if i just expand this function suppose i just expand this function to minus epsilon to epsilon right so to rem to the area of this function to remain unity only the length of this rectangle is going to be 1 by epsilon okay o only if the length of this uh, 
1 by 2 of psi n. Only if the length of height, height of the septangle is 1 by 2 of psi n, only then the area under this curve is going to be unity. So for this to be 1 by 2 of psi n, this is what I am saying whenever you are scaling in time, whenever you are scaling in time, this 1 by psi n is going to come in denominator here. Okay, so this is a property that this impulse function is following. And if we are performing time reversal, time reversal, then this time reversal is not going to affect this uh, function, right? Even here you can see we could just, we just putting a equal to minus 1. So what happens is mod of minus 1 is 1 which means that this function is not going to be affected by time reversal. Why? Because this function is existing only at a single point. If you are performing time reversal, then there is no swapping, no switching is possible. That is why time reversal does not affect delta function, right? Uh, then there is one more property known as sampling, which is, so what happens when you are multiplying any function with this delta function, what happens is you are going to have its sample have the sample of the function at time is equal to 0 and delta function. Similarly, if you multiply any function with the time shifted delta function, you are going to have sample of that function at the shifted time into the delta function itself. Fine. So, these are some of the properties of the impulse function. So, we are going to regularly use this impulse function. This is an important signal in uh, the subject. So, you can just remember all the properties of impulse function. So, next signal that we are going to look at is unit ramp signal. Unit ramp signal. So, uh, this is basically a linearly uh, increasing ramp. We are representing this by RT. And what happens in this signal is, this is how unit ramp signal is going to look like. So what happens in this signal is, whenever its value is greater than 0, that is for all positive time intervals, value of this function is going to be equal to t. That is the slope of this line, okay. This is just a, a slope of a line of slope unity. This is just a line of slope unity, okay. So, this is how we are representing this function and it is going to be 0 for time less than 0. So, similarly as we have seen in unit step signal and delta signals, this function can be shifted to any other point. Suppose I am required to draw r of t minus t naught and this function is going to shift right, shift right by t naught. So, this is how r of t minus t naught is going to look. Okay, so this is uh, how ramp signal is going to look. Now, uh, the three signals that we have just studied, impulse, uh, unit uh, step and unit ramp, all these signals are related to each other. How they are related? See, this signal, uh, this ramp signal, this is having a slope of unity, right? The slope of the signal is unity. So, when I am going to differentiate the signal, differentiating a signal means you are obtaining the slope of that signal. So when I am going to differentiate this signal, I am going to get a unit step signal. Why? Because slope of this signal, slope of this line is unity. So when you differentiate a ramp signal, you are going to get a step signal and vice versa. When you are going to integrate a step signal, you then you are going to get a ramp signal. Similarly, when I am going to differentiate a unit step signal, see what does the slope uh, signify? That how is this function changing? How is the signal steeping up? Okay. So, whenever you are going to differentiate a unit step signal, you are going to get an impulse at that point. Why? Because slope of a unit step signal. See, this is how a unit step signal looks like. Right. So, uh, slope of this line is changing steeply at t is equal to 0, right? Slope of the line is changing at t is equal to 0. That is why and uh, how much is the change in slope? What is the change in slope? Infinite because this is lying parallel to y axis. So, what happens is whenever I am going to differentiate a unit step signal, I am going to obtain impulse at that point. Okay, so uh, now we are going to look at uh, next signal. 
So the next signal that we look at is complex exponential signal. So we are defining a signal xt as e to the power j omega t. So this is a C since this signal is having j here. So this is going to be a complex signal. We are having an E exponent here. So this is an exponential signal. So this is known as a complex exponential signal. And uh, as we have already discussed using Euler's formula, using Euler's formula, this e to the power j omega t can be written as cos omega t plus j sin omega t. Cos omega t plus j sin omega t. So this cos omega t is going to be the real part of this signal. Whereas this j sin omega t is going to be its, going to be its imaginary complex or exponential whatever you say. Imaginary part. So this is going to be the imaginary part of the signal. So we cannot uh, represent it graphically because this is a complex signal. It is having some imaginary part which we cannot draw. But uh, for just now you can just remember that we were having a complex exponential signal which is of the form e to the power j theta or e to the power j omega t and we are going to use this signal quite often. So just remember it. Next signal that we are going to look at is sinusoidal signal. Uh, most of you would be aware of this signal though. Uh, but we are just going to look at it right now. So uh, most commonly used sinusoidal signals that we encounter are going to be sine and cos. So this is how a uh, sine signal is going to look like. And this is how a cos signal is going to look. So this is how a cos signal is going to look like. So this sign is having its zero crossover. Zero crossovers means whenever this uh, signal is going to have its value as zero. This is having its zero crossovers at zero pi, two pi, or generalizing, I can say that zero crossovers for sign signals zero crossovers for sign signals going to occur at k pi k pi where k can be 0 1 2 or any integer right okay so this signal is uh, going to continue in the negative direction also fine now zero crossovers for this cos t cos t is going to occur at pi by 2 3 pi by 2 and so on okay so this is going to have value 0 at pi by 2 then 3 pi by 2 pi pi by 2 and so on fine so uh, these are basic sinusoidal signals most of you would be aware of them already okay so if i'm just required to uh, tell about the time period of these signals i'm going to tell them as 2 pi Right, time period of these signals is going to be 2 pi. See, if I am expressing them as argument as only t, then I am uh, taking the time period as 2 pi. Suppose I would have expressed the argument as sine of omega t, then the time period would have been, okay, just look at it here. If I would have taken the signal as sine omega naught t, then time period would have been 2 pi by omega naught. 2 pi by omega naught okay so this is how you're going to find out the time period for these signals uh, also we can express these signals as complex exponential signals or uh, some coefficients of constant exponential signals complex exponential signals right like uh, sin omega t can be written as e to the power i theta minus e to the power minus i theta okay so we're going to look at it later for now you can just remember that these are some basic continuous time signals uh, in next video, we are going to look at some basic discrete time signals and after that we are going to look at some operations on signals.